Israel to the north. And uh, he was king over Judah. His father, though uh, Ahaziah, had made a friendship with uh, Joram, the king of Israel. And they went to fight the king of Syria together. And Joram got injured. And a, a, uh, Ahaziah went to go visit him after the battle. Now this is right around the time when Jehu was anointed to be king over Israel. Now Jehu was one of the captains in Jehoram's army, but Elijah, uh, Elijah was told by God, anoint that man to be the next king. And so he was anointed. The other captains said, wow, Jehu, you'll make a great king. And they went against Jehoram. And as they were approaching, Jehoram and Ahaziah went out to go meet Jehu. And he said, is all peace, Jehu? Is everything good? I mean, he's got this big group with him, this army with him. He says, everything okay? And he says, how can things be okay when your wicked mother and her witchcrafts and her whoredoms are in Israel? Whoa. And Jehoram said, flee, Ahaziah! Run! And he turns, and Jehu takes his first arrow out and pulls it with all his might and smites Joram and kills him there on the spot. His, arm, his, his soldiers pursue after a, a, uh, Ahaziah, and they catch up with him and they kill him. So now right here, off the bat, both kingdoms have no king. A lot of chaos going on. And here's where we pick it up in, verse, in chapter 11. And when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw her son was dead, she rose up. She, she, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. She rose up and all the other potential heirs to the throne, she had them killed. So she could consolidate power. But uh, Jehosheba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of ah ah Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain, and hid him, even him and his nurse, in the, bed, in, in the bedchamber from Athaliah, so he was not slain. Here was this little baby. He was about one year old, and he had a nurse to take care of him. The sister of Joram went and took this baby and saved it and rescued it, him and the nurse, and hid it hid them in her bedchamber for, for a little while, and nobody noticed that this little one-year-old baby wasn't among all these dead sons. And it says in verse 3, And he was with her hid in the house of the Lord six years. And Athaliah did reign over the land. Now, we look here, we think to ourselves, Wow, poor little Jehoash. Or Joash, it's, a, they, it's interchangeably the way they, they refer to him. I think his probably his proper name is uh, Jehoash, but sometimes they call him just Joash. All right, so it's either way, same guy. He didn't have a very easy start in life. He barely even had a start in life. Almost got a, almost was killed, and he grew up until he was seven. In the house of the Lord. This wicked woman, Athaliah, reigned as queen over the southern tribes of Judah. Who was supposed to be reigning on the throne? A son of David should be on the throne. Right, that's what God had promised. And they took this one young boy, rescued him, and hid him in the house of the Lord. Now, Athaliah, if you read about her and study about her, she was a daughter of Omri, all right, from the house of Ahab. She was a Baal worshiper and didn't care anything about the Lord's house. Matter of fact, we're going to see that her sons damaged the house of the Lord. They had contempt for God's house. So she never went in there, never saw this young boy, never knew that he was still alive and was a threat to her kingdom. And here we see in verse 4, and the seventh year, Jehoiada sent 
and fetched the rulers over hundreds, the captains and the guard, and brought them unto him into the house of the Lord, and made a covenant with them, and took an oath of them in the house of the Lord. First thing this guy did, Jehoiada, he was the head priest of the Lord. He was a well-respected man. A man of God, a man that was going to do right no matter what. Here's this wicked queen had taken control in a wicked way. You know what? God sees what happens. You think to yourself, boy, if you were under her reign, year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six, you start to think to yourself, well, this is just the way it's going to be. She's going to be the queen until she dies, and who knows what's going to happen after her. And it looks like wickedness had won out. But wickedness does not win out. God sees. God gives a chance for people to turn. If they don't, God's judgment's coming. In the seventh year, Jehoiada, who had helped raise this young man up, he brings in the captains of hundreds. All right? He brings in the, the captains of the guard and those rulers of the hundreds. And he brings them in and see what he does here. He uh, makes a covenant with them. That's a covenant. That's a promise between them and God. And then he takes an oath of them. He makes it, you, you swear right now that you're going to protect this secret I'm about to reveal to you. And then he shocks them. And he brings out this seven-year-old boy. And he says, here is the son of David. This is uh, Joash. He should be king. Not Athaliah as queen. And, and these men, they knew that he was to be the next king. And Jehoiada organized what was going on. He was the head priest. He did what was right. He said, okay, we're going to divide everyone into three groups. And he said, on the Sabbath day, we are going to anoint him to be king. And we're going to have two-thirds of the group around the king. Anybody that comes near him, kill him. And one third is going to be out, uh, out, outside there, guarding, guarding the uh, temple of the Lord to keep people from coming in that shouldn't come in. And uh, and they made this great, this great ceremony. And let's see. I want you to look in verse ten. And the captains over hundreds did the priest give. King David's spears and shields that were in the temple of the Lord. And the guard stood every man with his weapons in his hand round about the king from the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple along, um, along by the altar of the temple. And he brought forth the king's son and put a crown on him and gave him the testimony and made him king and anointed him. And they clapped their hands and said, God save the king. Everybody was rejoicing. Now we have the rightful ruler that should be there. And when Athaliah heard the noise of the guard and of the people, she came to the people into the temple of the Lord, a place she never goes to. And when she looked, behold, the king stood by a pillar as the manor was, and the princes and the trumpeters by the king. And all the people of the land rejoiced and blew the trumpets. And Athaliah rent her clothes and cried, Treason! Treason! Not that she'd ever committed any treason. But Jehoiada the priest commanded the captains of hundreds and the officers of the host and said, Have her forth out of the ranges. And him that followeth her, kill with the sword. Anybody who's going to follow her and see what happens with her, just kill them too. Anybody who's kind of interested in what this wicked woman's end is going to be. For the priest said, let her not be slain in the house of the Lord. Why did not Jehoiakim want her slain right there where she stood? Why not kill her right there where she was in, she came into the temple? It was a holy place. It was a holy place. He said, get her out of here. Kill her out of there. All right? Not in this holy place. And it was a place of rejoicing and happiness. Now, I want you to notice that right after this, in verse 17, Jehoiada made a covenant 
between the law 